so there are generally three steps in applying machine learning to, to trading okay the first step is actually the most tedious and most difficult step to be honest this is not something that i can help you with the whole system it is data scrubbing and finding problems with it and converting the raw data into features uh, for example, in my life cycle of trading strategy development course that some of you have taken, it took six weeks, okay, instead of two weeks. It took six weeks, six times three hours to, 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 to take that course. And it will describe in detail the multiple, multiple problems with data that you will encounter if you use that, uh, if you want to build trading strategy on it. Uh, example problem would be, uh, a simple problem would be survivorship bias. Let's say you want to download stock data from Yahoo. Well, you would not find Lehman Brothers. You would not find Enron because they are disappeared from the database. But in real time, when you trade a strategy live, you will be trading Enron because it's an S&P 500 company. You will be trading Lehman Brothers. It's an S&P 500 company. And you will go bankrupt if you, you know, you might go bankrupt if you have a highly leveraged long position on them, right? So those problem is severe. In, in financial data. And it's the same with any other data. It doesn't have to be just finance. Uh, you know, you, are, you have cell phone records, you have credit card transaction records, you have customer orders record, um, you have a traffic record, satellite imagery. Every single piece of data that you will ever encounter in real life has problem, has errors, have outliers, have noise. And how to deal with them is a science in itself. It's called financial data science. It's before machine learning. You have to sort out what your data is. And even after sorting it out, now, you know, believe me, the data is so egregious that um, even the data that was given to me, you know, I participated in a Kaggle um, machine learning competition with data provided by Thomson Reuters and some other firm. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's sponsored by Two Sigma, right, a huge corn hedge fund. And even that data that they provide for the participant it's just full of outliers. You just cannot believe how bad it is. So the steps in finding, in fixing this data is huge and tedious. And I have, we have spent practically three weeks explaining it. We thought that we can deal with that problem in two weeks in my life cycle course. Two weeks on data science and two weeks on machine learning. But no, it took up half the, the lecture just to fix the problem with data. Well, we don't deal with it with our platform hall. And you say, my goodness, I'm on my own. How am I going to fix it? No worries. We are over consulting. After you fix the data, you have to convert them into features. That's a step called features engineering. Features engineering um, is that, uh, well, you know, you have raw data like prices of a stock or, you know, whatever volatility, but most of this raw data is unsuitable as features. And I will explain to you why in a few slides unsuitable. You have to massage them into a way that is suitable for machine learning. Okay. Okay. So enough said about data science. Data scrubbing and feature engineering are both tremendously tedious, but you are going to handle it with or without our help. Um, what we focus on, the whole trading system, the, I'm sorry, the whole machine learning service focus on is the middle step, which is the machine learning step. We use classical classification technique to make prediction. We do not use regression. We're not going to tell you, oh, we expect Apple to go up 3% tomorrow, or we expect uh, Google to drop 5% tomorrow. We do not make that kind of prediction. We only make classification uh, prediction. That is a binary process prediction. We say Google is going to go up with a 0.51% probability. Uh, Apple is going to go up with a 0.42% uh, uh, I mean, 0.71%, um, I'm sorry, 0.71 probability. So that's the prediction we will make. We will not tell you how much it's going to go up, but we will tell you that it will go up with a certain probability. That's the, the output of our system. Now, if a lot of you want regression output, that is exact prediction of what the return is or something like that, we can implement it. It's not difficult. Just email me. We are open to user input because this is, a, we are whole as a surface is in prototype state. So we are constantly adding new features and we have to prioritize the new features based on your input. So if you think certain things are important to you, 
please feel free to email me and we will you know cons you know we will move it up the priority list for implementation so if regression is important to you let me know okay so um that's what we are going to do for you the machine learning prediction and we will tell you the accuracy and other performance metrics and we will output the live performance that's what we do for you but then that's not the end of a trading strategy uh, development there's the trading strategy construction part that you have to do some of you asked already how do i back test the signal how do i trade this live well for that there are many existing platforms once you have the machine learning prediction as well as the probability you can incorporate it in your trading strategy you can incorporate it in your live trading uh, through the platforms such as quantopian quant connect if ninja trader trade station whatever that you are currently using is perfectly fine. So that's the, the last step. That's a very important step. And again, that step is covered in my life cycle course. Um, and, uh, but, uh, and many other courses I'm sure out there for how to backtest a strategy. I have offered many uh, in the past, but that is also not part of our system. We are uh, offering something that is the middle step, uh, not the first step and not the last step. So um, regarding data outliers, the March crash on stocks was extreme and it happens once in a blue moon. And that is real data. Do we include this crash data? Yes, you definitely should. That is in fact a great out of sample testing of robustness of the strategy. Okay, so um, we did extremely well in February and March and that's why Wall Street Journal wrote about us. Um, and, uh, and what is most satisfying is that our machine learning model make the prediction completely accurate. We were shocked. You know, you think that this is a one in a lifetime event, so how can machine learning help? It did help and it helped in the most amazing manner. It is right on the spot. I can even be, it, it is, you know, no stretch of imagination to say that our machine learning prediction model is better than many epidemiological models that CDC uses. We know that this is going to be a big problem right on the 1st of February. We don't need to wait for CDC to tell us. So that is um, that's the answer. To that. um, okay, so why do we uh, use a random forest? That's a good question. Um, actually, that ties into our next slide, uh, which is what kind of model we should use. So, um, to a quick answer to that is that it is of the appropriate level of complexity. If we are using a simple linear um, machine learning model such as logistic regression, it doesn't take into account a lot of the non-linear interaction variables. It's too simple. They, these are called uh, shallow models. On the other hand, if we use deep learning, there are too many parameters. Sim frankly speaking, despite the voluminous uh, academic publication, I have not seen deep learning work in finance. In fact, if you look at the four Foremost uh, financial machine learning expert, again, Dr. Uh, Lopez Prado, he never discussed deep learning in his books. Okay, and I concur with that judgment. Deep learning is far too complicated, have far too many parameters for, uh, for financial data, and it's far too difficult to understand. It, it might be great for image data, it might be great for speech data, audio data, or um, uh, video data, um, but it simply has not proven to work on financial data simply because the financial data does not have the amount of data and the amount of structure for deep learning. The only exception I might add is high frequency data. If you are a option market, if you are a market maker that uh, wanted to make decision for every tech uh, and your input is tech data for multiple instances, that might be a place where deep learning would work. And that's also might be a place where reinforcement learning would work. If you are, have high frequency data, uh, you can try deep learning and um, uh, uh, and reinforcement learning. 